guys. So here's the wig. And now let's finish it up. So what you're gonna need is, you're gonna need an elastic band. This I got from Walmart for a dollar. So here it is, a thick elastic band. You're going to need a weaving needle, which is a curved needle and weaving thread. And go ahead and thread your weaving needle. A little knot in that. Bendiciones, guys. Look, oh my God, I'm about to put the wig on. Oh, look. And I also got the nails that were gifted to me. The other nails. So we're going to put nails on too. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this from behind your neck right here and you're going to measure from ear to ear stretched and you want it nice and tight, but not too tight that you're going to get a headache. And then you cut it. Right? Now, do you see where these wig clips are on the wig? I'm going to go ahead and take this elastic band and I'm going to sew it. I'm going to sew it on here. Like that. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, I didn't mean to sneeze like that. You didn't think I was going to do another live? Y'all told me y'all wanted me to put the wig on. And y'all wanted me to show y'all how to put the wig on. And when you guys ask, and my last video had 1,300 views. When y'all guys give me the views and the numbers make sense, I give y'all what y'all ask. You know? But if the numbers say like 800 views, I'm going to be like, no, nah, I'm not going to do another live. Because they don't want it. I'm able to gauge what y'all want from me from the views. If y'all feeling me today, I give y'all a lot of a lot of lives. If y'all not feeling me, I give y'all a little bit of lives. <laughs> oh, let me tell y'all about the dream. So listen. I'm in the back and you guys are telling me, Michelle, 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 he's right behind you. He's right behind you. He was like, oh, so you think I'm cute? I was like, no, I don't. I don't think you're cute or whatever. He's like, I heard you say you thought I was cute. He was like, um, what do you do? I was like, I'm a social media influencer. I am a world-renowned Arthur and I do guest speaking and seminars. I was like, I clearly see what you do. He was like, I'm a man of many talents. He was like, I actually have to go, but um, can I get your number? And I was like, you want my number or whatever? So whatever, I gave him my number, right? And he was like, I have another engagement, but this is going to be my last night in town. Are you going to be here um, tonight or when are you leaving? I was like, I'm actually going to leave tomorrow. He was like, okay, so let me take you out to dinner. So I'm like, who is this little guy from UK trying to talk to me, looking all cute and all designer and fresh and stuff? And he was like, cute, cute, right? Like, oh my God, who's that guy? Oh my God, what's his name? I'm a classic man. Jadena, he looked like him a little bit, right? So... This is hard to sew, man. 
So he looked like Jadena a little bit. So whatever. I didn't think he was going to hit me up. And this and the third. And you guys caught the whole thing on live. And y'all was making me blush or whatever. So then y'all started Googling who he was. And y'all were telling me, oh my God, like he's an up and coming artist from the UK. Like this and the third. He's breaking mainstream media. Or whatever the case may be. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I go back to my hotel room. I'm like, it is what it is. I'm getting all my stuff ready because I'm going to be getting on a plane the next day. So I get a knock, knock, knock on my door. And I'm like, who is it? And they're like, room service. So then when I open up the thing, I get a delivery of flowers, right? There were a delivery of flowers and um, with a card, with an invitation. And it said, from Landon, there'll be a car picking you up at 7. And I was like, ew, what is this? And then there was like a box, right? So when I opened up the box, there was some crystallized Louboutin shoes in there. Like the red bottom shoes. There was some crystal Louboutin shoes. Now I'm going to take it on the other end. You see this? I'm going to take it on the other end, right? So there was some crystallized Louboutin shoes. And I was like, ew, ew, ew. Why is Landon like this, that, and the third? Like, why is he trying to like really, really holler, like crystallize? I was like, first of all, how does he know my size? Like, what's going on? Like, whatever. Later on in the dream, I found out that he had a foot fetish, right? He had a foot fetish. And I was wearing heels those day. And um, because he has a foot fetish, he could tell what size shoe I wore. Because he was like peeping my feet or whatever. <sighs> whatever. So. And. So whatever. So I was like. Ew. Who is this guy? Why is he trying to pick me up at seven? Why is he buying me shoes? Like why is he really trying to get me? Like. I was like. I should deny him. Right? Like I should deny him. I should not come. Right? Because I felt some type of way. I was like. All right. Like you're just assuming that I'm going to be ready at seven. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay, good. So, um, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to deny him because I think that that's very pretentious of him to assume that I didn't have nothing else to do and that I was going to be waiting for him at 7. So I, um, I told the person who delivered them, I was like, can you send him back this note, right? So I sent him back a note saying, sorry, can't make it. What was that for? Like, no lie, probably like an hour afterwards, I get a knock, knock, knock on the door. And I'm like, who is it? Who is it? Mind you, I had changed in my pajamas and I have, I've had the shoes on, the shoes that he bought me. Because I sent a car saying I wasn't going to go to dinner, but I didn't return the shoes. The shoes were a gift, so that don't count, right? Well, at least I think it don't count, right? You gifted me those shoes, so it don't count. So um, I'm on the couch in my robe with the shoes on. I hear a knock, knock, knock on the door. And I open up the door, como una bruta, sin looking out of the hole, without looking out of the hole. And when I open it, it's him. And he's like... Oh, I thought something happened to you that you, uh, and that's why you couldn't make it to dinner. And here I was coming to check on you to make sure that you were okay. And it seems like you're perfectly enjoying the shoes that I got you. And I was like, oh my, into my hotel room and like pull up on me. So I got like mad nerviosa and he was like, um, can I come in? And I was like, So then he pushed his way through the door and he came in and he was like, um, so what is it that you have planned? Like you couldn't make it to dinner. You know, I have one night here and you're going to leave a man stood up like that. That isn't nice. Um, and I was like, no, I just felt like it was a little pretentious of you to assume that I didn't have nothing else going on tonight. So, you know, you thought that I could just go with you to dinner, you know, like I didn't like that. So he was like, well, I apologize for assuming but you can't blame a man for shooting his shot for what he wants. 
And I was like, yeah, I can't blame a man for shooting his shot, but still, you could be a little, like, more, um, whatever, right? So now we're having this back and forth, and he's like, all right, so how about this? He goes into his phone. He picks up the phone. He goes into the next room. He makes a phone call, and then soon after, he's like, um, he's like, wait, wait a minute. We hear knock, knock, knock on the door, right? I open up the room door, and it's the hotel concierge. They're bringing up food to the room and all of that, and like candles, and they're setting up the table because there was a room in the table. And he was like, well, I thought I'll bring dinner to you. And I was like, oh my God, like why is he really, really trying to like, he really, really trying to get me and stuff. So I was getting mad nervous or whatever the case may be. And I was like, but I'm not even dressed. I'm not even dressed. I'm not even dressed. He was like, would you like me to get undressed? Do you have another room, in, a robe in this room? And I was like, no, I don't. He was like, I'm actually staying in the exact same hotels that you are staying. So I know that there's another robe in the room. So he goes in there. He goes to the bathroom. He takes off his clothes and he puts on a robe. And then he looks like a freaking Adonis like an Adonis in the robe. And then he comes back out and he was like, well, since you try to avoid me and dinner, I'm going to bring dinner to you and I'm going on your level. And he left his shoes on and then he was like, okay. So I'm like, oh, you are a persistent man. He was like, when I like something, I go after what I want. And I was like, and you want me? I was like, you don't know anything about me. He was like, well... I couldn't stop thinking about your eyes and the sparkle in them. So I had to figure out who you were. So when I went to the back, I asked to see the guest list. And uh, you're quite an accomplished woman. And I was like, please don't tell me you Googled me. Please do not tell me that you Googled me. He was like, I kind of Googled you. He was like, did you Google me? And I was like, no, I don't even care about you, this and the third. He was like, I kind of know you're lying. And I was like, why you know I'm lying? He was like, I caught your live stream. And I was like, oh my God. He was like, it seems like your house of realness um, Googled you for, uh, Googled me, uh, who I was for you. And I was like, yo, I swear, this social media stuff will get you caught up. Like you cannot even lie because you will get caught up in your lie if you try to lie. Cause Everything is on social media, right? So I was like, ew, it's not even like you a big deal because you just big in the UK. And he was like, oh, you got to bruise a man ego like that. And I was like, ew, whatever. So I sat down and then we started like talking and stuff and eating. And because the table that we were sitting at, we, was, we had like rolly chairs he um he was like off to the side and I was here. He took his leg because he was mad tall. He took his leg, put it underneath the roadie chair, and then pulled my chair like this close to him. And he was like, why are you so far away from me? I want to see that pretty face up close, those beautiful freckles. And then I started getting mad, mad red, mad red. And I got so embarrassed that I started to put my head down like this. And he was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Like, never hide that pretty face from me. And I was like, can you please stop right now? Because I can't even focus. Like, who told you to come into my room like this? Like, you caught, you catching me off guard. Then you doing all this smack. Like, like, why are you doing this to me? Like, why are you being persistent? Like, what's, like, what's on your biscuit? Like, what's your malfunction? Like, you can't just come over here and try to sweep a girl off her feet like this, like unprepared. And he, <laughs> oh God. So whatever, we had dinner and we was talking and let's just say after dinner, right? He picked me up off the table and he brought me to the couch and he made me sit on his lap and he was like, 
I want to have a face to face with you. And I was like, please, please let me go. Please get me off your lap. Please, please, please. I'll answer any question you want. I'll do whatever you want. Just please let, like, just let me get off your lap because I can't focus right now. He was like, but I love seeing you squirm like this. And now that I know I can do it, it just makes it that much more fun. And I was like, that's not even freaking fair. Like, why do you have to act like that? And he like held on to me, like on my waist, my waist. And I was like trying to squirm off and I was getting embarrassed. And then like stuff was getting like awake. Stuff was getting awake and then the robe started to slide. And I was like, oh my, what is that coming out of your boxers? Es una culebra. What is that? Oh my God, that is literally a black pi uh, panther, a uh, black python, a uh, black python with um coming out of his trousers. So then, of course, that made me more nervous because what's more nervous? I mean, what's more nerve wracking than a cute boy? A cute boy with an erection. That's more like, that's more nerve wracking to me. So, so now I'm embarrassed. Okay, Michelle. Get this. I don't, I don't like this side part. I look like Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Like, I want to be where the people are. I want to see, want to see them dancing. So his peepee -pee get hard and like now I'm embarrassed because his peepee -pee is hard and <sighs> Do I want a middle part? What do I want? Hold on. Maybe I don't want a middle part. What do I want? Do I want this side part? This is what I want? Because I'm trying to figure out the parting. A side part? All right, cool. This side part. I don't like, I don't like this wig for some reason. Hold on. So whatever, he got me sitting on his lap. His peepee -pee gets hard, right? And his peepee -pee was mad. All right, his peepee -pee was mad, mad big, right? Mad, mad big. Like, okay, you ever seen something so, um, you ever seen something so, like, you know, like, it traumatizes you a little bit because it was coming out of, like, this from the bottom part, from the bottom part, right? So that, of course, made me mad nervous because, first of all, this is a guy that I don't even know. I just met him. He bombarded in my room, in my hotel room. He made them bring dinner up there because I refused to go to dinner with him. Now he's holding me hostage on his lap and his trouser snake is on full attention and he got me sitting on his lap. So I was nervous because you want to know something like... I don't like this wig. Hold on. We're going to have to fix this parting because I don't like this wig like this. So then finally I let go of him because once he realizes that his pee pee is hard and I'm looking at his pee pee, he gets embarrassed and he was like, my bad. You was just squirming on top of my lap trying to get away from me. If you would have just sit still, um, this wouldn't have happened. And I was like, this wouldn't have happened if you would have never came to my room demanding that I go on a date with you. And now you're over here like 
you know, I was like, that's real disrespectful, you know? Like, a woman could say no. And he was like, you right, you right, I apologize. It was not my intention to make you feel uncomfortable, this, that, and the third. And, of course, me being a freca and being a slick mouth, I was like, well, maybe I wasn't completely uncomfortable. And then I realized what I said, and I thought that I said it low enough, but he heard me, and he was like, oh, say less, say less. He sweeped from behind me, right? He swept from behind me, and he grabbed me from the back, and he picked me up, and he threw me on the bed. He threw me on the bed. <laughs> I don't think I want to talk about this dream no more because <laughs> it's too much. It's way too much. But let's just say he threw me on the bed and Hold on. I'm just trying to do a part. I'm just trying to part it right now. I need to write an erotica book. I do. I need to write an erotica book. Because my dreams be doing way too much. Way, way too much. Because, all right, so he, he flinged me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, he flinged me on the bed, and when he flinged me on the bed, he started to, like, kiss all over my body, and he started to, like, kiss from, like, okay, so when he picked me up off from the back of me, right, I was facing this way, he grabbed me from behind me, and he threw me on the bed, so I was laying face down on the bed, right, I was laying face down on the bed and he was on top of me. So he started kissing me like in the back of my neck. But while, while he had all of his weight on me, so I could feel like all of his weight on me and I couldn't get up and I was like crushed underneath him and he was overpowering me. And I was like, sir, sir, like, oh my God, like, I can't believe this is happening. No, but... Like, low-key, I wanted it to happen a little bit. So, I was, like, resisting, but not really resisting. You know what I'm saying? Now that I got my part figured out, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the hot comb because we need the we need the big guns right now to make sure that the parting is super, super flat. So, we're going to um, turn on this hot comb, and we're going to let that get hot, nice and hot. Cause that's gonna press out the parting because i have the parting right here and now that that's there i think i need to um pluck the hairline a little more because the hairline is still looking a little thick for me and it's looking a little wiggish and i don't like that so it's always good it's always good to take less hair out the first round and then go back if you see that it needs to be plucked more than to go ahead and over pluck the first time because you could um you could ruin your wig like that. So he started kissing me from behind, right? Where he had all his weight on me. And you ever been like, okay, so you ever been in a situation where it's almost like your whole body is tensed up because the sensation is too intense. So you're like frozen. It was like I was frozen under his touch and I couldn't move. Like I couldn't move, I couldn't speak, like because everything was like heightened. Like everything was heightened. You ever had your feet go numb? Have you ever had your legs go numb and then you try to like touch them and they feel like mad tingly? That's what my whole body felt like. My whole body felt tingly, like pins and needles. And it was just from him kissing me and stuff. And my whole body just like gave out and collapsed on him. And I let out like a big, big moan, like a moan. And ew, okay, can I tell you something mad weird? Like, ew, ew, like how do you know what sounds to make when you're being intimate with somebody? Like think about it. When you watch pornographic videos, 
the, all you be hearing is mad exaggerated sounds, right? So, like, I be thinking in my head, I be mad scared. And I'm like, ew, I probably sound mad ugly if I make sexual sounds in the bedroom. So, I be quiet, right? I be quiet. And in my head, I be thinking, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe I just be overthinking stuff. So, I let out a, a sounds, right? And it turns him on. Like, it turns him all the way on. He was like, oh, my God, that's what I'm talking about. And he was like, I know your body was wanting this, too. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. This is happening. And, like, oh, I can't even tell y'all what happened. But basically what happened was I'm going to have to do an OnlyFans so I could tell y'all the exact dream. But let's just say he explored my body and Michelle got her groove back, right? So, whatever. It happened. We did it. We did the nasty. And we was laid up in the bed. And he was holding me after we did it. Right? So, he was holding me. And I was like, I've never done something like that. Like, that was just so, like, animalistic and barbaric. And the that and the third. And it was just so... He was like... He was like, so that's mine's now? And I was like, what you mean? That's yours now. He was like, is that mine now? And I was like, yours in what way? He was like, so I can have it whenever I want it. And I was like, oh, so you just want to have it whenever you want it, but you don't want to buy the cow. He said, first of all, never call yourself a cow. And who said I didn't want to buy the cow? And I was like, you want to buy the cow? He was like... I don't see why not. If I didn't if I didn't want the cow in this reference, I would have left after the whole situation was over. And I, he was like, did I leave? Or, or do I still have you in my arms? And I was like, ew, stop. He was like, where are you going after this? I was like, well, I have a seminar in Michigan. And um, after that, I'm going to be going to Cali. And he was like, okay. Um, I have a gig up in Cali in two weeks. So how about when you're down there, we'll link up and we'll be together. I want I want us to spend time together when I'm out in Cali. So I was like, okay, whatever. And he was like, all right. So we got dressed. I went about my business. He went about my business. He went about his business. And I never thought I was going to see him again. I thought that it was just like, just that, you know, that moment, we did it. It was a heat of passion. I thought that it was just a heat of passion and it was just never going to be nothing after that. But like, he was like, um, so fast forward, I'm in Cali, right? I'm in Cali and I'm, I'm going into my hotel room. I'm going into my hotel room. And I'm like, okay, I have a reservation from Michelle. And they're like, oh, you don't have a reservation here. And I go down and I see that there's this guy, this like limousine driver. He's um, He has a sign downstairs that has my name on it. And he's like, Michelle. And I'm like, yes. He's like, well, um, come with me. And I was like, what you mean come with you? He was like, oh, we have... We have a, a special villa for you. I said, a special villa? And who booked this villa? And apparently, it was Landon who booked the villa. Because, mind you, I haven't heard. I didn't hear from Landon after we had sex. I didn't hear from him. And he did say he wanted to link up in California. But I didn't think it was like, you know, I didn't think he was really, like, meaning it. Like, I didn't really think that he, like, meant it, meant it, that he wanted to meet up in California. So... It just took me by surprise that he remembered exactly when I was going to be in California. So I get in the car and guess who's in the car? Landon. Landon is in the car. He's mad excited. He grabs me and he kisses me. And he's like, he's like, baby. I couldn't stop thinking about you. This and the third. You don't know how how long it took me to figure out what hotel you were gonna be at. And I was like, you know, you want some stalker. I was like, you want some stalker ish. 
he was like, I'm not a stalker. I just have to move a little differently because, you know, I have a name. And I was like, oh, so you trying to keep me a secret? He was like, no, I'm not trying to keep you a secret. Why would you say some shit like that? And I was like, because you say you had to move in certain ways. He was like, because of my name. And I was like, ew, you haven't even made it here in the States. He was like, you'll see soon. And I was like, what you mean I'll see soon? He was like, you'll see soon. And I was like, okay, whatever. So he booked out this whole house in um, California. He had this house in California. And he said I was going to stay with him. And when I got there, when I got there, I'm trying to pick the part in my hair. Oh, guys, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't know how to do a side part without making my head look like a potato. I don't like this. I'm going to do a middle part. Side parts give me anxiety. I think my head is too big for a side part. Okay. Okay, that's good. I like a good old middle part. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Dry the hair and flat iron it. I know, but I'm doing it the easy way because I can't, look, the video is already 31 minutes long and I haven't even applied the wig, right? Um. The video is already 30 minutes long and I haven't even applied the wig because I've been sitting here talking to you guys and sharing this story. So whatever, we're in California and he's like, we have something to go to tonight. And I was like, we have something to go to tonight? He was like, yeah, I have this event I'm going to and I want you to come. And I was like, you want me to come to an event with you? He was like, yes, I want you to come to an event with me. What's the problem? And I was like, okay, who's going to be in this event? He was like, well, my managers, my record label, you know, like it's nothing, it's nothing too serious. Just, you know, we're going to go to this event. So I'm like, okay, boom. He was like, it was going to be just like a dinner party with a couple of people. That's what he told me. Right. So I didn't think much of it. So he's like, we're going to have to go shopping because you're going to need a dress because this restaurant is a bit formal. I said, okay, cool. So we go, and now we're down Rodeo Drive, and he takes me to Christian Siriano, because Christian Siriano had a showroom in California. So we go in there, and he, he, go, he walks in, and he directly says hi to, like, the sales representative there. And he's like, um, I called ahead. There's supposed to be a dress waiting for me here. And he gave his name and Christian, Christian Siriano came out from the back and like, um, like addressed him and like they, they hugged. It almost looked like they knew each other. And he's like, oh, is it ready? He's like, you know, it took me a while. You know, this was a very last moment and you didn't give me an exact measurement. I'm hoping that she fits it. And I'm like, hoping that I fit it, fit what? And there was a custom gown made for me, right? There was a custom gown made for me. Apparently, Landon had Christian design um, a custom gown for me for this event. And I didn't know. And it was this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ball gown. And Christian made him a suit to go alongside with it. So... I'm still thinking that this is a dinner and I'm thinking, oh, wow, this is like a really, really fancy, fancy dinner. Right. And I'm like, OK, whatever. Come to find out, you know, I'm doing the dress fitting. The dress looks beautiful. I'm like blown away by it. And I'm like, still can't believe that this is happening. So we go back. The dress so happens to fit. They did some minor alterations. We go back to the hotel room. Now he has this whole glam squad. The glam squad is getting me ready. And they're doing all this stuff to like prep me up. And I'm like, yo, this is like 
all of this for a dinner? Like, what's going on? So then we get into this car after I'm all dressed up. He's dressed up mad, mad cute. And we get into the car. So I'm like, okay, what's the name of this restaurant? He was like, don't worry about it. You'll see when we get there. So when we, I believe that we're pulling up, as we're pulling up to like this driveway, I see like a whole bunch of paparazzi and a whole bunch of lights. But I really couldn't see in detail because the car was blacked out and dark, right? So when we stop, somebody opens the door. And when we open the door, it's a red carpet. It's a red carpet. And when, as soon as the door opened, he slides out and he reaches over for my hand. And I'm like, Landon, what are you doing? What is this? You said we were going to a restaurant. He was like, are you actually telling me that you don't know what this is? And I was like, what is this? He was like, this is the MTV Awards. And I was like, the MTV Awards? I was like, oh my God, I forgot that this was the MTV Awards. How could I have forgotten? I was like, why would you why would you bring me here? Why would you this, that, and the third? And he got back in the car. He was like, why are you freaking out? I was like, Landon, do you know what this means? If you walk out with me, everybody is going to be asking questions and this, that, and the third. He was like, I bought you a dress. I got us ready. Like, I thought that you would be happy for this. Like, and I'm like, I just want to know how you feel. He was like, if I felt any type of way about it, we wouldn't be here right now. And he was like, do you trust me? And I was like, in theory, yes. He was like, so let's go. And he got me out of the car and then it, that, the rest was history. Then it started to hit all the tabloids. Landon, dating Michelle, right? So listen, that's not even the worst part, right? The worst part was, the worst part was, is that when we get inside, he had launched his album, right? He had launched his new album. And he was supposed to perform that night for the MTV Awards. He was supposed to perform. So he gets on stage to perform. And he's about to perform one of his new hit singles. And he starts to talk about, in his rap, this girl that he met. This girl that he met and he couldn't get his mind off of her. And that he thought, that he thinks that he's in love. And at the end of the song... He's like, Michelle, would you be my girl? Mind you, we're, he's on stage, like, performing. And he's like, Michelle, would you be my girlfriend? And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe that I don't. Guys, can I tell you a secret? I like this wig, right? I like this wig. But, like, I like my natural hair better. I think that's why I'm not liking the wig because I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I like my natural hair better. You know, I get it. I mean, the wig is fun, but I like my natural hair better. I think that's why I'm not liking the wig. Because I like my natural hair better. That's crazy. I do not like this wig. 
I don't even think I want to glue it down because I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, I'm not feeling this wig at all. I like my natural hair better. I think I look so generic. Like, I look so, like, basic. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I look like a basic chick with this wig. Yeah, like, I look basic. I don't like it. I didn't like the side part at all. I hated the side part. The side part looked even uglier to me. Like, I don't like the side part. The side part looks even uglier to me. How about calling the wig charisma? Just ask some pros with a tenasa. I hate this wig. All right. No, I said I was going to glue it down, so let's glue it down. You're going to take your wig cap. So that's how Landon asked me to be his girlfriend for the first time after a one night stand well it wasn't even a one night stand because he still wanted it after he got it so is that a one night stand still is it i don't think it's a one night stand if he comes back for more i'm gonna make a hole in this wig cap so that I could put my ear through it like that because then it's gonna make the wig cap lay flat okay there you go so now that we have that Now that we have that, I'm going to take some of this free spray and spray my hairline. Okay, it's starting to look better. It's starting to look better. Okay. It's not that bad. It's not that bad, Shelly.
I think I know what's the problem. I got to pluck the part a little bit. That's what it is. I have to pluck the part a little bit. Okay. Ha. Huh. Okay. This is looking way better. This is looking way better. Okay. Okay, Michelle. All is not lost. <sighs> Wigs are tricky business, guys. They're tricky, tricky business. Now you take an eyebrow, it does, it is exhausting. That's why I don't like gluing my wig down. I hate gluing my wig down. I'm gonna snip the ear part. Right? And I'm going to trim away the excess stocking cap. I hate this. I don't like doing my wigs. The fun of it is gone. I swear, this don't got to be perfect. It don't. Because I'm going to probably take the wig off tonight. Because this is doing too much. Okay. My wig <sighs> now that you've done all that I'm gonna plop your wig back on <sighs> okay all of that work for this. For it to look like scalp at the end.
That was a long journey, but it's still not over. It's still not over, trust me. We gotta take this. Spray our hairline. There you go. There you go. <sighs> that took a long time. It took longer than I expected. And yeah, of course, I'm going to blow dry it. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to blow dry it and straighten this out. And then I'm going to hot comb it to make it super, super flat. But I'm not going to do all that on camera. I'm going to do that off camera. And I'm probably going to go live on Instagram, okay? So I love you guys. I'm going to go on live on Instagram right now.